Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Wake Up Missoula. I'm your host, Scott Ramp, and I'm here to tell you about all the things that are happening in and around the city of Missoula today. Today, we got Rob Edwards from the Missoula Aging Services to talk a little bit about uh, your Medicare plan, uh, Part D, and of course, Part uh, Advanced. So if you want to change your plan, now is the time to do it, and we'll talk a little bit more about that when we talk to him. So let's talk a little bit about the weather. Uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about a lot of stuff. So kicking things off, 37 degrees, your high is gonna be 65, your low is gonna be 34. Saturday, your high is gonna be a lot cooler as you're gonna have mixtures of rain and snow happening with 80% chances of that. So we have a sports game tonight, so I'm kind of worried about them because we're gonna have that 90% chance of showers happening with the lows into the 34 degrees starting tonight. Sunday, you're gonna have 37 degree temperature as your high, so we're gonna have that cold snap that's going to happen as well. So let's talk a little bit about uh, the news. Um, and of course, if you have gotten a mailer in some of the wards around town, um, a political action committee, a PAC for short, uh, known as uh, Missoulians for Missoula, have left a mailer for people who uh, oppose uh, TIF funding um, to uh, basically vote against people who support TIFs. So tax increment financing is a growing concern and uh, Missoula is growing and ever growing and which utilizes TIF funding to help uh, help the process move a little smoother and help developers with some tax credit to developers as well. Um, there's a lot of information out there. Um, I'm not going to get into it because this has become a political issue. So the information that you guys can go check out online to find out more is to go onto the City of Missoula's website itself to look at all the contacts. You can contact Ellen Buchanan with Missoula Redevelopment Agency. She is the one who uh, agrees to do TIFs um, or uh, helps pass the TIFs with the MRA board. So you can go to ci.missoula.mt.us. You learn more information about them. You can uh, contact your local city ward, but you, sh you should get all the information um, for yourself. In Montana State news, the uh, Montana's largest coal mine has been shut down over permitting issues with the Department of Environmental Quality. Um, Billings Gazette reported the DQ has denied an operating permit to the Spring Creek, Mi Spring Creek Mine owner, Navajo Transitional Energy Company. Spring Creek Mine is located near Decker, just outside the Crow Indian Reservation. In addition to buying Spring Creek, NTEC has developed the rights to the proposed big metal mine to which the Crow hold the mineral rights. The company is entirely owned by Navajo Nation, though not controlled by the tribe. DQ is asked that NTEC waive sovereign immunity, allowing the tribe to be sued for issues arising at the Spring Creek mine. In national news, big things happening with the impeachment. Rick Perry, Energy Secretary, who announced his uh, uh, his uh, his leave from the administration, um, uh, left criticizing Trump. Uh, Rick Perry led U.S. delegations to Ukraine when newly elected uh, President uh, Vladimir uh, Zelensky, um, I don't know, I, I probably butchered the name, so, uh, was inaugurated back in May. Um, and it was Perry who urged Trump to make the now infamous July phone call to Zelensky, uh, a phone call that is at the heart of this uh, impeachment inquiry. So if you already know, Trump asked Ukraine to inv investigate Joe Biden for political, for political gain. Uh, what started out during the 2006, allegedly, p for political gain, just want to clear that up, uh, what started out during the 2016 campaign run uh, saying that Trump, Rick Perry was running against Trump in the 2006, and, uh, and he said Trump was running a cancer on cons conservatives. Um, he did not hesitate to be on the Trump administration soon after Trump was elected. So that's kind of what's happening in and around the news today. I have an article for you guys. I'm going to have uh, Rob Edwards on the show to talk about how you guys can update your uh Part D and Part Advantage with Medicare. So without further ado, here is this.
Hi, we're back here with Rob Edwards. He is the Community Service Director for Missoula Agent Services. Missoula Agent Services is a partnership that... Uh, uh, we promote the independence, and dignity, and health, health of older adults, adults and, and those who care, care for them. them. All right. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> You've almost got it as well as our I, I staff know, does. Right? I'm pretty impressed. <laughs> right. And um, we were here to talk about uh, Medicare Part D. Medicare, Medicare Part D and Medicare Advantage Open Enrollment Period, yep. which started on uh, October 15th and is running through December 7th. And what does that mean for our aging population? Sure. For our population uh, who are on Medicare, Part D and Medicare Advantage are the pieces that take care of their prescription drugs. Every year those formularies can change, the plans can change, and it's a really good idea for everybody to come in and have a check to make sure that they're on the plan that's the most affordable for them. Right, and so affordability. So what are some of the benefits of um, reevaluating your prescriptions? Sure. So one of the big things that happens every year is the, uh, the drug plans have the ability to change their formulary. Formulary tells what level they're going to cover their drugs at. Every year they can change that and you can see huge differences uh, for their billing costs. We've seen people save uh, up to ten to $20,000 in a year by changing drug plans. And they can only really do it, for most cases, there are special exceptions, but most people can only change during this open enrollment period. Cool. So, um, what are uh, some of the advantages of uh, changing? Your Medicare plan? Well, really a lot of it is in cost savings. Uh, but in the appointment with uh, one of our resource specialists or one of our volunteers, what they'll go over with you is what medications you're on, uh, which ones are covered at different levels, as well as what pharmacies might be able to provide a better cost depending on the blood drug plan. Some may be a preferred in-network cost and it may cost you a lot less to go one place. I did my mother's uh, Part D the other day and the difference between two different pharmacies located less than a mile apart was going to be about $600 a year. Wow. So just something small like that. The other thing is our, our uh, folks that are doing these plan finder uh, interviews and doing the checkups for everybody are able to give you some advice on some maybe some extra help that you can get for lower income or a drug program that might help cover those costs for you. Yeah. Well, I mean, like there's a lot of uh, benefits here in the city of Missoula that a lot of people just don't know about. There's a lot of uh, places and a lot of things, especially Missoula Agent Services. So, you know, 55 and older, over. Depends on the program. Right. Uh, we have some of our programs, uh, Senior Corps, some of our volunteer programs that start at 55. Uh, some of our programs like Meals on Wheels are 60 and over. So it really depends on the program, yep. but uh, we can find a way to help uh, just about anybody who needs help. Yep. Uh, no Wrong Door is our philosophy at Missoula Aging Services. If we can't help you, we can certainly find a place that can. Yep. And we try to let people know that they are welcome to come see us. We're, uh, all we, we're open uh, 8 to 5, uh, Monday through Friday, uh, 728-7682. Uh, get you to our call center, live staffed all the time. You won't get a recording, and you'll get some people there that'll answer the phone that might be able to help you with one stop. Nice. And uh, like you said, um, this is a uh, a meeting, so you you have to establish an appointment Correct. to meet with one of the staff members. There's a lot of people that work at Missoula Agent Services. We have a large staff. We do only have about seven people that do these Part D appointments. Uh, it's very specialized, and they have to be trained by the state uh, to do these appointments. Uh, we are filling up fast. Uh, the appointments go until uh, December 7th, and right now, last open appointment I saw starts, I think the soonest one we have might start right in the second to last week in November. Wow. So it's, it's a high demand. Uh, get in as we can, because we do run out of appointments every year. Uh, we will have a... Uh, seminar late in there in December to help people who didn't weren't able to get plans uh, able to get appointments with us to help them take care of their stuff as well yeah. but these one-on-one -on -one appointments are much stronger yep and so speaking of these appointments mm -hmm. you said that they take at least an hour to usually get usually about an hour uh, Medicare Advantage is another side of it it's a different kind of Medicare program uh, those can take up to two hours depending on what we're doing and also if you have a husband and wife or two people two hours is usually a, a good bet uh, our resource specialists and volunteers are trained to provide pretty in-depth, detailed service, and we don't like to rush through these kind of things. Yes. All right, so once again, where can people find more information about this? They can call us at 728-7682. They'll get our call center, and they can take care of uh, getting you set up for an appointment and uh, tell you which, which time, which thing will work, and we'll get you set up. Awesome. Thanks, Rob. All right, thank you. Or we'll be right back right after this. So the important thing is, just as she said, we're documenting, are they continuing to decline? Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. Did you want to add anything? I, I just like to add one thing with dementia. People have very episodic behavior and they can look like they're near death and a week later 
everybody's wondering what the big fuss was all about. I think uh, Dr. Evans will agree that it's ex that makes it much more difficult uh, to figure out what's going on. And just as a personal note, my wife was on hospice for 11 days. His name is Forrest Red Bex, and he was a character who was known around, all around Missoula. He was a jack of all trades. When he grew up, he, he worked, uh, he was a baker, he was a baker, bread baker at Eddie's Bakery, which is where Rockin' Rudy's is now. That used to be Eddie's Bakery. Red became a street preacher, downtown, various spots, and he read from the Bible. And he yelled at the, he stopped cars, and he stopped people. And he wore this, and he stood there with his Bible. And he stood there and said, time to repent. I'm here to talk about love. Of course, I read the book, you know, and everything that Deborah had wrote, I, it has to do with actual facts, you know, that happened on, on the reservation. And I, and I can picture a lot of these things, and I get... I'm there as a technical advisor, as a cultural advisor. Uh, that was my job with Jeremiah Johnson, to be a technical advisor. And so uh, later on, the, the director asked me if I would do a part in the movie to save them money, uh, and to bring in an actor from uh, Hollywood and me teaching them the language. So I portrayed that part, which was easy. Uh, they, they, they asked for a flathead braid, and so they didn't ask for Chief Joseph or anything like that, so I didn't have, <laughs> didn't have to study about him. I just portrayed myself. Hey guys, welcome back. Now it's time for a little bit of movie trivia. No, just kidding. I'm just going to talk about how movies uh, are just awful. And speaking of awful, yes, we have another one of those like uh, teens who are probably in their 30s um, <laughs> uh, horror film where uh, you get an app on your phone and it's like, you're going to die soon. And you're like, okay, I'm going to try to prevent this from happening. Dead. That's kind of how the movie is in a nutshell. But let's go a little bit deeper on what the deal is is going on. So have you ever downloaded an app that would tell you when you died? Well, this time it's Hollywood. Take a young innocent girl who downloads an app that tells you the second when she dies, uh, only to have it happen in like two days. Woo, crazy. Uh, so this whole movie is cute, cute college girl and adult playing a high school student because, uh, you know, it's liability for anyone who's under the age of 18 in Hollywood. There's a whole lot of red tape and there's, it costs a little bit more to, uh, uh, um, to pay a child and also pay for their insurance with a child, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, it's huge. It's big. Um, anyways, watch a group of teens survive their past expiration date um, on their phone, blah, blah, blah. Kind of like Final Destination, but with uh, updated technology. Up next, we have a movie. Uh, yes, we have a movie. Uh, it's called Black and Blue. Welcome to the nightmare of growing up on the street only to become the police that have oppressed the people in the neighborhood. You want to do good. You want to be the shining light within the city, but only the cops are just as corrupt as the criminals there. So the cops do something really bad, and you're just like, oh, no, you did something really bad. And it's just like, you can't tell anyone. Give us that proof. And like, oh, I'm not giving that proof. And run away, run away. The rookie cop. 
gets aid from the people that she once called a criminal. And she must uh, fight for her survival while at the same time fighting society, blah, blah, blah. So it's, 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 it's one person, a rookie cop versus society as she tries to survive the street. Uh, yeah, so it's, uh, that's basically it. So I'm assuming most likely what's going to happen is there's going to be a lot of cut off set pieces. There's going to be a point where she's kind of cut, uh, cut off from the exit and be like, there's no way out, only to find a way out. And then she finally makes it to the thing. Uh, maybe a lot of people uh, die along the way, but the, you know, kind of like, but a co one of the um, corrupt police officers have to survive just to have the true justice served to them. So this is kind of a movie that kind of dives into that once again about uh, justice is served cold. All right, so there's a b bunch of movies that are coming out this weekend as well. Uh, I have a fun video th that was made. Um, it is also a good, fun, uh, scary movie because Halloween is happening next Thursday. And uh, next Friday is First Friday, in which I'll, I'll talk about something else uh, besides uh, Halloween. So here is your Halloween movie of the week, courtesy of the Saturday Drop-Ins. from that abandoned cabin out out of town. You're creepy, man. I don't know. Hey, look, man, it's just a joke. Besides, look at all this fur. I mean, seriously, this stuff is from, like, ancient creatures. It's, like, cursed. I think the cursed part made you get ripped off. Was this guy, he he, he usually just stayed at the cabin alone, and he he just go goes out uh, hunting uh, 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 creatures, but not like any guns or anything. He like traditional hunting, okay? And but he he apparently suicided there. You so basically got a robe from a loner, dude, uh, and he killed himself. Sounds creepy, man. Well, would you have the balls to go in the middle of a cabin in the middle of the night and get this? Well, that doesn't sound worth it. Dude, I see you. Stop screwing around with me. Dude, come, come down. I'm not going up there. No, I'm not going up there. Come down. Hey guys, welcome back. Let's talk about a lot of things that are happening within the city of Missoula. We're gonna, we're here to talk about um, a little bit of this, a little bit of that, but let's kick things off with some city council. There was a joint city-county uh, meeting as well. Uh, 
and one of the things I want to start off is TIFFs. They are a big deal in Missoula, uh, out, uh, and some Missoulians are not keen on it. And of course, during the public comment portion of this, a group of people um, are concerned about uh, the deal that Nick Shakota and uh, developing on the Fox Triangle site with the city of Missoula. And so this is what they had to say about Nick Shakota. A huge number of Missoulians are struggling worse than ever to make ends meet, but it seems that all the city can do is squeeze already desperate taxpayers for just a little more in perpetuity. But thank God we have all these music venues to get drunk at so we can forget what a dumpster fire our town's turning into, right? And thank God we aren't using tax money to deal with affordable housing. My dear city council, what you've really communicated to us here last week, us the community, is that you don't care about us. Entertaining wealthy tourists at all costs may be Nick Chakota's prime directive, but it is not shared by the rest of the people who are actually from here. The city wants me and my neighbors to pay for this Wisconsin millionaire's fancy new eyesore, a venue that we don't need, don't want, and shouldn't be talking about. There are already enough concert venues in this town owned and operated by Nick Monopoly Chakota. The Top Hat, the Wilma, and the Kettle House are the ones that we all know about, but he also, of course, as you are well aware, enjoys exclusive booking rights at the Osprey Stadium. And all right, so uh, just to interrupt, uh, because uh, the public comment kind of continued on throughout uh, some of the issues here as well. Um, and Nick Chakota came here a while ago, uh, updated, uh, renovated the Top Hat, um, bought the Wilma, worked on, um, uh, a partnership with the Catalyst Amphitheater to build the amphitheater where they do shows. Um, I mean, honestly, uh, there is there's a lot of stuff going on here, and those were some of the public comments that were happening there as well. Um, if you're interested in hearing the whole uh, public comment, there are a lot of uh, concerned folks um, targeting Nick Chakota for this particular thing as well. Uh, but of course, uh, a lot of the big things that are happening out there is that the city is talking about affordable housing, and it came in terms of um, major things, which included the uh, uh, Skyview Senior Living Development. We're looking to get zoning approval to build a $600 plus unit per month for a residence 55 foot and ol older. Um, Alex uh, Burkhalter from Housing Solutions talked a little bit more about uh, some of the uh, housing that's going to be developed in this area. Affordable housing, it's almost become a household topic. Everybody is talking about affordable housing. And um, we have an opportunity to bring affordable housing um, to Missoula with this project for seniors. Um, their, the funding mechanism for this, housing tax credits, is very competitive. Uh, it's a very long process. Uh, our original application was turned in all the way back in April. Uh, in May, we found out we'd made the first cut, and now here we are near the end. One week from today, the Montana Board of Housing will make its decision. Uh, we're one of eight applicants, um, possibly seven. I've heard recently that one of them uh, was returned for noncompliance at another uh, of the developer's projects, so we could be one of seven. They have dollars to fund probably five, maybe six, which makes this project very very likely could happen. All right, so uh, the process with this has been ongoing. This is supposed to be additional senior housing for targeted for seniors to help affordable living and people who just can't manage their homes anymore. Uh, Malcolm Lowe, uh, who lives by in this uh, neighborhood as well, is concerned uh, for the single um, um, home, uh, single unit homes on uh, these land. Um, Oh man, I'm having trouble here trying to come up with the words, but uh, Malcolm Lowe uh, eloquently uh, states his um, concern about uh, the development of this Skyview. So to approve the pro spot zoning of the, of the whole lot, you're handing a prop the property owners a golden egg while diminishing the value of our single homes next door. The city government has abandoned this caution to help Mr. Burkhalter meet application deadlines, once again advocating for the contractor. Some of us, myself included, have expressed that if this entire lot is to be zoned RM 135, we would rather it be this project for seniors than an unspecified project with up to 81 units. But let me be clear, it does not mean I support this project. It means only that we consider it the lesser of two evils in the face of an unsympathetic council. 
I want to emphasize that the current proposal for spot rezoning of this entire lot would still allow the owner to develop the other half of the product of the property to incredibly high density. We have no indication of how the city plans to address the significant in infrastructure demands that this project would create. We do, however, know that the project will not contribute to the tax base to help pay for those needed improvements. Mr. Burkholter will get some six million in tax credits, yet his project will not contribute to the schools, the parks, the roads, or his much touted nearby bus line. I object. All right, so um, that was uh, the objection to the rezoning as a whole. Um, um, Susan Kohler from Missoula Agent Services responds to some of the concerns and that uh, more senior housing is very important to an ever-growing population. But I think it's really hard to get tax credits and this is a good location. I think the, it will bring um, improvement to the area um, just by the attention of the city, uh, improving the roads and sidewalks in the area and I certainly hope transportation um, will also be there. I'm asking the members of City Council to approve the rezoning for this project. If this project is approved, I hope the developers, city, and the neighborhood work together to make this a welcoming new home for the tenants. I also hope there will be continued discussion on how to improve the streets, lighting, and bus stop locations to enhance the neighborhood. All right. So. Uh the city approved of this rezoning so they can move forward with the construction of a senior living home, otherwise known as the Skyview Senior Living Development on this particular area. Um, actually, sorry, it didn't get passed. Uh, the item was brought back to committee, which of course I will talk um, more about um, in terms of um, committee meetings um, right now. So, uh, so, man, that was a, sorry about that. This is definitely a struggle this morning with uh, some, uh, just like my notes and whatnot. So there's a lot going on, a lot of development, a lot of things happening. And right now they threw it back to committee to talk a little bit more about the development of this area along with it as well. So now we're, we, now we're going to be talking about Community of the Whole. And uh, one of the biggest things that are happening with Community of the Whole is uh, Salvation Army opened up their doors in 2018 to an overflow of homeless folk who needed a place to stay during the extreme weather conditions. And the city of Missoula uh, offered uh, this. So it, um, months of community planning at the Salvation Ar Army did agree a temporary winter shelter program at the Russell Street um, Salvation Army offices. Uh, offices, no. Uh, the service ran uh, from late December through the end of March and served as a valuable pilot to determine the ideal programming for future years. Dedicated funding from the city of Missoula, Missoula County and St. Ho St. Patrick Hospital was a, a, a proponent in moving this thing forward. The Pavarel Center has agreed to serve as lead provider. The Pavarel Center, along with community partners would like to update the city council and this is an informational item only and they wanted to talk about this as well so uh, oh sorry about that Teresa Williams director of reaching homes um, a 10-year planned in homelessness talks uh, a little bit more about this plan and a little bit more in context the only way that we're going to end homelessness is to ensure that everyone experiencing um, a housing crisis has access to a safe and affordable place to call home so I just want to preface that as the umbrella and what we're working toward. Um, and the other factor, and Aaron touched on this, is the causes of homelessness are complex. Therefore, the solutions are going to take all of us working together, the, the community. And we saw that in the planning leading up to this. Um, and we also saw the effort with city council and county commissioners. We're very, very grateful. All right, so one thing um, that they wanted to uh, also mention in terms of homelessness is that they uh, mentioned that the number one cause of homelessness is uh, not being able to pay their rent on time and getting evicted. The next is domestic violence. And, of course, the, the third most um, common thing with people is that medical bills. So if someone has a medical issue or something that happened right there, um, because of that, um, it also has a chance of putting them out as well. So mini outreach has been done with helping folks who uh, don't want help as well because there are a lot of people who are considered chronically homeless who just cannot catch a break and a lot of times um, people just prefer not to deal with the Pulverella Center and deal with some of that stuff as well. Um, being there for folks is important and not forcing them into home regardless if we think it's good for them. That's one of the things that they're trying to approach. Um, Andy from uh, this, uh, from this uh, 
plan as well is giving gratitude to many organizations. So these are the many organizations involved um, with um, helping this uh, kind of uh, move forward. So this is the kind of like a uh, all the organizations involved. First of all, I would like to thank the committee that has worked tirelessly to come up with solutions for winter shelter this year as we look forward to the future and our plans in our community. I would also like to thank the Salvation Army and the Hope Rescue Mission, formerly Union Gospel Mission, for their hard work last winter to keep people safe and alive. I would also like to thank Mountain Line and ASUM Transportation for their support in providing transportation and warming space last winter. You all truly saved the day. After a year-long planning process with key stakeholders, the City of Missoula has asked the Pavarello Center and the Salvation Army to partner in setting up a winter shelter facility. All right, so uh, one of the biggest things that's happening as well within this is that the Pavarello Center it will be hosting a set number of people with, while also um, s serving the overflow of uh, by providing staff and um, folks at the Salvation Army. So the Pavarello Center will have a kind of a Pavarella extension through the Salvation Army uh, while remaining open for extra folks during daily hours. One of the things that really uh, kind of helped um, cultivate the partnership with Salvation Army is that Salvation Army hosted uh, a lot of the POVs, people when they had flooding issues and used Salvation for six weeks. Um, the Pavarella Centers will take uh, point on running these operations in both locations. Of course, if you are interested in, in donations um, in donating and helping out the cause, uh, here is uh, another uh, uh, um, another quote from Andy and also a list of things that you guys can donate as well. The Pavarello Center needs your help. Um, we're always asking for help with supplies, um, but especially now as we gear up to serve more individuals this winter, we will need um, items listed here on the screen. Um, especially important right now, I would say, are blankets and towels. As we move to serve more numbers overnight, that those things are going to be really important to make sure that people have adequate bedding. So All right. So as you can see here, um, if you can see this, because uh, we're we have a we have a new camera and a new setup here for the output. So uh, right, toiletries, blankets, towels, toilet paper, clean supply, socks, coats, hats, and gloves. Um, anything that you would think about um, uh, would be more than appreciated from them as well. Um, uh, and I do want to flash up their website and their number, so if you want to donate and you want to learn more information about the POV and how you can get involved, you can go to thepavarellocenter.org or you can call them 728-1809 for donations and other uh, volunteer opportunities. All right, so that's kind of uh, what's happening with uh, the POV and the winter shelter. Hopefully they'll be uh, starting it up pretty soon for folks. Uh, for who need a place to stay indoors for this uh, for the harsh winter that is coming upon us because today will be probably one of the last good days to be out out and about as we are transitioning to colder colder weather 65 is the high so we have we're and then of course the high on Saturday is gonna be 30 in the 30 degree temperature so it's gonna be a 30 degree drop this weekend so just think about that kind of stuff and um, one of the big things that are happening within the city of Missoula as well, and also the state of Montana, is flavor ban on vaping products. So uh, vape juice, as they call it, uh, is uh, there was a state uh, plan. It was an emergency uh, bill that uh, w it w which, w which went into effect earlier this week. Um, and, w and for 120 days, the sale in exchange for um, e-juice in the state of Montana uh, so one of the, uh, to re and uh, it was a way to remove sales of flavored juice for the e-cigarettes, which have uh, targeted youth. Um, and um, October 8th, 2019, Governor Steve Bullock direct, uh, directed the Montana Department of Health and Human Services to implement emergency administrative rules to temporarily prohibit the sale of flavored e-cigarettes. And it went into effect on October 22nd, and it will last until 120 days. Um, this is Lisa Vaskovich. Um, she's with the Missoula County, Missoula City County Health Department, and this, and she gave a presentation on uh, a little bit more about uh, the city of Missoula and their way of moving forward with uh, um, preventing more uh, young kids from getting addicted to e-cigarettes. Oh that this is a crisis for our youth in our community. And I wanted to direct you just to a couple stats that are on the screen. And that 
the current use of e-cigarettes, that bottom one in particular is 30% of our high school students are using e-cigarettes e vaping versus 4% of adults who are probably trying to use a product to quit smoking. And so that's a big concern to us um, as those rates are going up. All right, so 30% um, of high school students um, have been known to vape. Um, a lot of times with uh, the city county health department, there's a representative named Doug who's been um, actively working with the teens, trying to figure out why they're doing this and trying to uh, get to the root of a lot of these issues. But a lot of the root ha stems from middle school. Uh, middle school uh, has a ten, uh, is the formative year where the kids start trying the things only to become full of vapors by the time they're in high school. So Lisa ta is talking about uh, uh, proactive solutions within the schools. Then this is $70. That's another thing I wanted you to know is that this product $70 and some of these vape pens are like $100. And so our kids are getting their hands on these and they're being confiscated at the schools on a regular basis that we're going to create more of these tools to educate teachers, parents about what to look for in a vape product and um, also to get them services. We've been requested to help set up tobacco sensation programs at our schools to help these kids. Um, so. All right, so a uh, lot, of, lot of moving parts. Um, um, one of the biggest things that I actually uh, took away from this uh, meeting is that it's, uh, it's, um, it's, it's very, it's very interesting kind of situation is that uh, vape juice, you know, it's flavored, so there's a lot of uh, candy type flavors, so it's kind of interesting when a kid asks about a, a cherry flavored something, and it's like, oh, what's that? Oh, it's, it turns out that it has nicotine in it as well. So uh, this ban is to uh, uh, forbid any exchange of e-juice from any forms, flavors, or scents, person, business, or online. Oh, and online, sorry, not or. Shannon Atario, Director of Environmental Health, talks about enforcement and what they're doing to uh, try to curve uh, th um, the use of e-cigarettes. Our plan is to do spot checks, and some of that depends on how much we get in complaints. There's 189 tobacco retailers, and so the spot checks are not meant to be stings. They're meant for us to, to figure out if we have widespread compliance with the rule or if we have, you know, what what steps we need to take in order to get the vape, flavored vaping products off the shelf. Um, so the the, the point of it is, the point of getting them off the shelf is to reduce the access to teens, right? To reduce the access to teens. And I think this number is so telling when you look at 30% of high school students um, use vape and that, or vape, and that's on a regular basis. 58% have tried it. And so it's just so different from adults. And so regardless of what the intent is of having flavored vape products, that's the effect. The effect. All right. So I kind of wanted to leave that quote on there. I do have one last quote uh, from uh, Lisa Vescovich, who's talking about uh, that they want to connect and show kids that they care, and they don't want they don't want to uh, be in a situation where um, you can't tell me what to do. That kind of situation. This, so this is Lisa Vescovich. Middle school is kind of like the kindergarten for high school. That's where they're going to get hooked. You know, and so, and then walking around, if you smell like cherry or strawberry and you're walking by a group of kids, I would empower you to say, hey, how's it going? I really care about you. Do you know that's bad for you? You know, I mean, it's just like, you know, we're a community that cares about kids. And so it's that social norming where we know that it's not okay for them to use and that we care about you. And I think as a community, whether you're a parent, a healthcare provider, a, you know, a citizen, knowing that they can become addicted so quickly in all those places. So uh, during this meeting, there were a lot of back and forth, a lot of people are talking about how this has basically uh, ruined a whole generation who was potentially going to be tobacco-free in the first place. So this whole meeting um, is informational only and is public safety and health, and I'm going to uh, show you exactly where you guys can go. Um, it's um, it's the City of Missoula's website. You can watch all these uh, br uh, broadcasts and more. You go to ci.missoula.mt.us. You go to your government. I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. So I need to, f ooh. Hold on one second. Your government. 
uh, agendas, webcasts, minutes, which is around here underneath city council. So keyword is webcast. So let me bring that up a little bit more. Click on that guy right there. Um, and it brings you to this page. It looks like it's the home page, but if you scroll down a little bit, you see a calendar, you see all these icons right here. You see how it says agenda, covers, and then when you see a video, you can click on any of this stuff like I did. I clicked on Committee of the Whole, and it brings you to a whole other page with, uh, you know, like, you have all these hyperlinks that are on the page. So look, oh, Devar uh, Department of Natural Resources and Conservation Flood Plan Update. Ooh, if you click on here, uh, the video itself starts loading, and it'll go right into when they start talking about the topic. As simple as that. And you guys uh, can find out more information about that and more. But I also wanted to mention that MCAT, yes, MCAT, uh, did a bunch of interviews with a bunch of candidates. And are, they are now available on demand on our website at MCAT.org. Um, you can go to Watch. You can go to Channel 190. And you can find it on Channel 190. And you can see all the candidate interviews. You got Alan Alt. You got Amber Sherrill, Gwen Jones, Alex Ferregio, uh, Amber Sh uh, Schaffer, uh, Drew Iverson, Heidi West, Mirtha Becerra, Nick Schantz, Sandra Veseca, um, and these are all the people that came on the show. We invited all candidates to come on the show. Um, the election, uh, the ballots have already been sent out, so uh, get out the vote, and a lot of the ballots are really big, and some people only have that one uh, award member to vote for, so there you go. Uh, that, that's some of the things I wanted to mention as well as uh, you can find it on our YouTube channel. You can pretty much find it anywhere if you uh, really look for it. All right. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, that's all I have to say about that. I did want to throw it to a fun video for you guys before I go into events. It, it is from the Dude I Just Drew episode, which starred me on that episode. So without further ado, here is Dude I Just Drew. And when I come back, I'm going to be talking about events. <laughs> Hello everybody, welcome back to a new episode of Dude I Just Drew, season two, episode three with yeah. our special guest. Scott! Yeah. Uh, you may know Scott by the uh, disembodied voice that uh, sometimes joins in. Running tech and stuff, 90% <laughs> of the time? Yeah, yeah, about 90%. Um, so, rules, as always, the same thing. I don't know how you guys don't get it, but hey, let me let it off. Say it again. <laughs> uh, we're going to pick pouch thing at random. Two, we draw that pouch thing five minutes. That's the limit. Um, five rounds. Yeah, five rounds. Five minutes, five rounds. Uh, yeah. I'm going to coin toss to see who goes first. Nice. Yeah. Is that it? Yeah, yeah we nailed it. Alright, wrap up, let's go. Apple Planet. Oh, wow. This is just a suggestion. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> so Let's see. Apple Planet. Better than Planet Sheen. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it's going to be a bite now that you say it. Hmm. Is that a propeller? Well, what's going to happen to the residents of the planet? Yeah, well, they'll, they'll, they'll be on the thing as well. So, And I'm also going to drive uh, draw like a, a moon that's kind of like an orange. We have to draw so many moons in this show. <laughs> <laughs> we gotta shoot the moon. Part of it's during the day, but another but, part of it's not. Well, yeah, because yeah, that's how no planets. Suns on opposite ends, so it's on day all the time. Yeah, it's not day all the time, unless you're like like between the sun and the earth or the planet Apple. 
You know what I realized? Like, if I keep doing like this with my pencil, it actually makes it look like I know what I'm doing. Yes, it makes it makes the. <laughs> you see? Look, doesn't look like not, I'm If I don't see, look? if I don't see drawing, then I'm like, yeah, I know. You look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> and then he's like signaling. Wah 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 wah. He's signaling <laughs> orange, orange planet. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Little, little the ring. Tip. I thought it would be like Milky. <laughs> oh shoot, I do see that. I do see that. And a bagel. I'm hungry. An apple day keeps the doctor at bay. Draw, draw yourself as Spider-Man. Did we already do this? Isn't this already no. like No. No. Is that a wishbone? <laughs> Make a wish, Spider-Man. Make a wish, Spider-Man. <laughs> Happy birthday, Spider-Man. What Spider would you wish for uh, Spider-Man? Uncle Ben. <laughs> I was like, oh. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm about to, like, go full Spider-Man. Oh, you're just about to flip on the mask and go. <laughs> shut up, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, my signature. Rock ice. Rock ice? And then whoosh. <gasps> whoosh. Because that like, iceberg is bigger on the. It's actually a rock. <laughs> The one that crashed the Titanic. Me. The one that crashed the Titanic. <laughs> Looks kind of cool. There, Nick. <laughs> <laughs> ice is water on the rocks. <laughs> oh, it's a, it's a cool ice cube. <laughs> 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 it's a microphone. For the rest of this time, I want you to just, uh, scat sing. <laughs> A boop booty bop Draw your life. What? Uh, oh. That's such a terrible time in my life. You were born to be a great hero. It's like I was born to be an old man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, someone should be talking. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Uh, blah. <laughs> sorry, I was yawning. Is that the Have back you of your head? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Teleporting bread. I think I know who put that one in. Was it you because you watched Team Fortress 2 yeah. animated We're series? Having no references. Huh? That was quite bad about. What did you just say? So, what is it? What's this awesome thing? This right here. Sell it to us like it's commercial. So, well, you like your bread on the go, right? You want to be able to put from one bread to the other bread and just, you know, be able to teleport it? Uh, it's easy, just like nose. that. You just put <laughs> it in a, a $4 billion teleporter. You have to get the other component, which is another $4 billion, to receive your bread. And that's how you get some fast traveling bread from one side of the room to the other. Range includes 100 yards. How many yards? 100. My neighbor's yard? Yep. <laughs> so rather than walking into, you can just teleport it right to your face and eat bread. But it only works for bread, doesn't work for anything else. That's it? Bread as food made of flour, water, and yeast, or another leavening agent, mixed together and baked. But in why? Bread. But why is it? Money. Graham, I'm going to jump up <laughs> and just kick you in the head. <laughs> We actually oh teleported God. it. Oh <laughs> I, I just hope that uh, you know the judging is judged fairly, <laughs> and that um, they know that they can trust you within themselves about what is right. I won this round, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but anyways, um, great episode. Uh, remember, you can follow us on YouTube. Yep. Uh, go to our Facebook, our Dude Ages True face, face, Facebook. We have a website. Yeah. WordPress. WordPress. Um, shirt. I don't remember. Spreadshirt. Spreadshirt. <laughs> remember to follow Nowhere.Arts on Instagram because that's me, along with Nowhere exclamation mark on Twitter because that is also yeah, me. That's the reason you have to go home because it's him. It is me. Nobody else. Nope. <laughs> if you want to see digital art or like any other art, just it's like crisper than this. And it's spooky season. Oh, yeah. Oh, right, yeah. But the, I think that's it. Yeah. That's about it, yeah. So tune in next time, next Saturday maybe, I guess. Uh, but yeah, hope you guys have a good night. Bye, guys. See you guys later. Hey, right, guys. Welcome back. You left me to see me once again. I feel sorry for you. Moving on. <laughs> Moving on. We're doing, we're doing events, and you're going to like it.
a lot of events are happening. All the indoor sports stuff is happening today. Hey, you know, like this weekend would be perfect. You know, Mismo, Missoula Indoor Sports Arena, Roots Acre Sports Center, and Flying Squirrel have a bunch of activities uh, happening indoors. Fun, padded environment, uh, safe, fun for the kids, all that stuff as we're going into the winter weather. Hands-on Science Chemistry Spectrum Discovery Center is open uh, daily. Uh, I think it's uh, Wednesday, Tuesday through Friday don't, um, and Saturday from 10 a.m. to about 5 p.m. Uh, starting at 11 a.m., they're doing a chemistry, celebrate National Chemistry Week as they create explosions and colorful reactions at the Discovery Bench. Um, this week in Makerspace is Strawbies. Um, watercolor and Yarn at the Missoula Public Library. They're doing uh, watercolor and yarn. You get to work with some uh, folks at the Missoula Public, Li Public Library about this. Open hours in the Makerspace. Missoula Public Library uh, open time allows visitors to explore the resources of the Makerspace, learn how to use the equipment, or work on a project of their choice. And it's from 1 to 6 p.m. Um, say hi to Ira for me. Uh, 31st Annual Spaghetti Dinner. Uh, De Borgio Schoolhouse. It's the 31st annual spaghetti dinner at the historic De Borgio Schoolhouse, and it happens from 4 to 7.30 p.m. Um, take exit 18 on I-90. Spaghetti salad and homemade desserts. Oh, they will raffle off wonderful gift items. Adults $9, children $5. All proceeds benefit the beloved community center, the De Borgia Historic Schoolhouse. New Zach. Zach is grand opening. They just had their uh, monster art show, which uh, the kids draw the monsters, and then they have artists throughout the Missoula uh, draw uh, their version of that monster. Um, they did that the other day. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to see it today with their grand opening. This is their official grand opening. Um, it's their new location. It's next to between uh, Masalas and the Shack Cafe. It's off of Main Street. You can't miss it. Um, and it's going to kick off with a concert by uh, the Coed Rock Camp. Um, and the Zach is known for their girls' rock camp. And the Coed Rock Camp will be the first group ever to perform in the new Zach stage starting at 7 p.m. Executive Director Kia Lysak will speak immediately afterwards and kick off the inaugural Monster Mash Bash Dance Party. Say that five times fast. This is a family-friendly event, and non-alcoholic beverages will be served. Missoula Haunted House, Missoula Fairgrounds. Hey, there's a lot of stuff happening there as well. They're going to be doing kid hours for the Missoula Haunted House. Missoula Haunted House is a very scary, very intense um deal because their new production is called Escape from Hell. This year's theme will take you on a wild adventure through the classic and contemporary takes on hell. Um, Thursday, uh, Friday, uh, of course Thursday already happened, so forget about Thursday. Forget out of here. Friday from 7 to 11 p.m. Saturday, they're doing kid hours from 4 to 6 p.m. And then they have the adult hours from 7 to 11. And they do the exact same thing on, um, oh no, wait. Yep, and then they do the exact same thing on Thursday um, from 4 to 6, and uh, Thursday is uh, Halloween, the 31st. But they're also uh, going to be doing a kind of a post-Halloween uh, deal on November 1st um, from 7 p.m. until whenever. So uh, 11 p.m. at the ra latest, uh, you can pay $20 to get in the express line, or you can pay $15 and wait about an hour, hour and a half, okay, like I did. Um, kid hours, uh, it's $5 for kids uh, between 4 and 6 p.m. It's a wonderful resource, uh, Rootheads Studios. Uh, a lot of great people work on this every year, and it is a great resource. Uh, UM Jazz Band, Women and Changes. University of Montana is doing a jazz program to celebrate women in jazz and in dance. UM Concert, UM Ensemble, Jazz 1, Jazz 2, and Jazz 3, along with dance choreographer, uh, choreographer, choreo dance choreographer, Darn, I'm having a real struggle here. Joy French will be dancing and coordinated by Heather Adams along with special guests, music composed and arranged by Patty Darling. So Patty Darling is the theme um, of their dance. Uh, so this wonderful music event takes place on the today at 7.30 p.m. in the Denison Theater on the Missoula University of Montana campus. Rocky Horror Picture Show. Hey, it's t at that time of the year. Every year, the Missoula puts on a live Rocky Horror Picture Show for the weekend. Um... The Rocky Horror Picture Show's live uh, late showing. Uh, this is they usually do a show in around uh, eight, and this is going to be at the Wilma. Um, they'll do another show at eight eleven p.m. for some of you late night folks. Um, so yeah, tickets go on sale are already on sale at the Top Hat. You can call them at one eight hundred five one four three eight four nine. Reserve premium balcony seating, uh, reserve cabinet tables, blah, blah blah, all that stuff. You can find tickets uh, through Log Jam Presents. Um, and that pretty much wraps up your Friday night. There's a lot of stuff going on. There's so much going on. This is the Halloween weekend. Halloween falls on a Thursday, and usually it's the weekend before Halloween, unless the Halloween uh, happens on, like, a Friday. So this year, uh, 
Saturday, all markets will be wrapping up. So pretty much uh, tomorrow uh, from 8 to 1 p.m., the farmer's market will be pretty much done. Um, you get your apples, your ciders, and all your late fall harvest goods before it's too late, uh, which is 1 p.m. Saturday. Um, family fun, fun time at the YMCA. YMCA provides a fun uh, activity space for a lot of families. It's $70 per family without a membership. So if you are a member of the YMCA, you get in free. And this happens from 9 a.m. to about 12.30 p.m. every Saturday. They have a bunch of after-school events happening most days. Oh, the, uh, no, it's they have uh, at most mornings, and it's only in the afternoon on Fridays from 3.30 to 5.00. I remember that. Okay. October New to Medicare study. Uh, Saturday, this is a continuing education conference center uh, from uh, 10 to 3 p.m. Uh, with a one, one hour lunch break. If you're approaching the age of 65 or are eligible for Medicare due to a disability, learn how you can make the most of your Medicare options. This is an interactive two part class. You'll learn the importance of enrollment dates, saving money on your prescription drugs, and much, much more. You can call the Missoula Asian Services. I had uh, Rob uh, Edwards here. Um, and they have a lot of uh, programs to help people get into Medicare. You can do a one-on-one -on -one deal where you can uh, uh, update your Plan D and your uh, Medicare Advantage as well. So that's happening right now. But um, as we're going later into the season, Moon Randolph Homestead will no longer be doing open hours. Uh, it's a homestead here in the city of Missoula. Um, and this is, and it kicks off from 11 a.m. to about 5 p.m. It's every Saturday where they give a walk around tour of the home Moon Randolph Homestead. You can't miss it. You shouldn't miss it at all. So fa Saturday Family Art Workshop is happening for the Festival of Remembrance, formerly Day of the Dead, uh, Missoula Art Museum. Saturday family friendly fr fa Saturday family free workshops. See, there's a lot of whew, tongue twisters right there. Um, 11 a.m. to about 12:30 p.m. It's free for families. The whole family is invited to make together these artist-led free workshops. Please, please arrive a few minutes early to ensure, uh, ensure a spot. Children under the age of seven should be accompanied by an adult. All materials are provided. Just bring an open and creative mind. And speaking of creative minds. MCAT Saturday drop-ins are every Saturday from 1 to 5 p.m. Any kids aged 9 to about 13 years of age can come on down and do some stop animation with our Legos. Um, they can make some live-action movies like you just saw with The Wolf, a video I saw er that I showed off earlier in the episode. I'm running out of time. Freaky Fridays at MCT. Um, you know, you've seen the movie. Uh, Mother, daughter, don't see eye to eye. Switch bodies. Then see eye to eye. The end. Uh, Disco Blood Blath, uh, an old Sears building. Uh, so they're going to have like a rave kind of mm, 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 party at there starting at 5.30 p.m. at the old Sears building at the mall. Uh, Finn, uh, Painting with a Twist, is doing a local artist where you sip on your favorite beverage. All instructions are guided and supplies are provided. This is Painting on a Twist. It's for the Stevens Center. Nightmare at the Ballpark, Oregon Allegiance Film is doing their own spooktacular night. And it's going to happen on the 25th, 26th, 30th, and 31st from 8 p.m. to 11 p.m., Orgrin, baseball field, scariness. But that pretty much does it for my morning show. I want to thank you guys for joining me this morning. Uh, what a morning. I want to thank Rob Edwards for the Missoula Agent Service for joining me. And for Wake Up Missoula, I'm Scott Ramp. See ya. <laughs>